Assalamualaikum and good day. My name is Muhammad Aizat. So today I would like to share about my final year project entitled Silver Nanoparticles Loaded Activated Carbon Synthesis from Clitoria Tenetii Extract for Crystal Violet Dye Removal. And my supervisor is Dr. Rosha Pima. So as you can see here, this is the overall overview of my final year project. So it started with the preparation of the flower extract and then to produce the silver nanoparticles and it will combine with activated carbon to produce the adsorbent and this adsorbent will adsorb crystal violet dye to get a better water properties. Dye industry is a large skill and important across the world with major usage for the production of colored textile, plastics, leather and also rubber. However, the water pollution associated with dye pollutants are becoming worsened since the annual worldwide production of commercial dyes are expected more than 100,000 times. So therefore, in this final project, silver nanoparticles loaded with activated carbon as adsorbent in removing dye pollutants are showing interest as it can remove various dyes such as crystal violet, methylene blue and also methyl orange. And in this final year project, adsorption process will be conducted because it is cost effective, simple and flexible with various dye pollutants. So this is my objective and research group. So the first objective is to synthesize silver nanoparticles loaded activated carbon and to analyze the adsorption capacity of AG and PSC in removing crystal by the dye. For the first research group is to synthesize silver nanoparticles via the CT flower extract using the green synthesis method and the flower extract will be mixed with silver nitrate, NaOH and activated carbon with mass variation to produce the AG and PSC. And the second research group is to study the adsorption capacity of the adsorbent with several parameters such as activated carbon ratio, contact time, adsorbent dosage and also dye pH. Silver nanoparticle is a very famous nanoparticle because of its antimicrobial properties. However, there are less research regarding silver nanoparticles in the area of water and also wastewater treatment application, but right now it is successfully applied in this area. However, the main drawbacks of using silver nanoparticles in the water and also wastewater treatment application is because of its silver ion aggregation in the water after the removal of the pollutants. So therefore, the silver nanoparticles need to be loaded with adsorbent such as activated carbon, silica or zeolite to improve the adsorption process and reduce the drawbacks. Next is the Clitoria Trinity flower or in Malay is Bunga Telang. It is abundantly available in tropical Asia especially in Malaysia and in this flower it contains anthocyanin pigments that can act as reducing agent. So in this project anthocyanin will reduce silver nitrate from AG plus to AG. And next is activated carbon. So as we all know activated carbon is a good adsorbent because it has great adsorption capacity towards various water pollutants. It is low cost, high porosity and also high surface area properties and it has successfully removed various dyes such as methylene blue. So what is the purpose of immobilizing silver nanoparticles into activated carbon is because that silver nanoparticles can actually enhance the active sites in activated carbon which means that this AGNP can enhance the adsorption capacity of activated carbon in removing the pollutants. For example, it had been successfully removed crystal violet dye with adsorption capacity of 82.2 mg per gram and can be reused for about 7 consecutive times. And for the crystal violet dye, it is often found in industrial affluents due to its massive application. And for high concentration of CV dye, it can actually reduce the oxygenation and can affect the photosynthesis process and the biological activities in the water. So this is my methodology for my final year project. So as you can see here in this overview picture, so first thing is to produce the CT flower extract and then it will produce the silver nanoparticles and these nanoparticles will combine with activated carbon to produce the adsorbent and this adsorbent will remove crystal by the time. So first thing first is to prepare the city flower. So first thing is to collect the city flowers and then the flowers will wash with tap water and the water and after that the city flowers will dry for about 2 hours at 70 degrees C and with 0.05 gram of the dried city flowers will mix with 100 
hundred ml of the eye water to get the city flower extract. And after that, the flower extract will centrifuge for about thirty minutes and will filter using the filter paper to remove the flower impurities. And lastly, the city flower extract will transfer into centrifuge tube for further use and store it in a cooler to freeze the extract. So next is the methodology for the green synthesis of silver nanoparticles. So first thing first is to prepare 3 millimolar silver nitrate and 0.1 molar NaOH for further use. And after that, this NaOH will adjust the pH of CT flower extract that was prepared before using 0.1 molar NaOH to pH 10 for about 10 minutes. And after that, this mixture of CT flower extract with NaOH uh, will be mixed with 3 millimolar of silver nitrate solution to get the silver nanoparticles. And during this mixing, the color changes from light blue to dark brown will occur that indicates the formation of silver nanoparticles. So this is the methodology for the synthesis of AG and PAC. So first thing is to mix silver nitrate with mass variation of activated carbon ranging from 0.25 to 1.25 gram. And after that, this mixture will mix with CT flower extract at pH 10 uh, for 30 minutes at 50 degrees C. And after that, the mixture will centrifuge sonicate and also wash for about three consecutive time and after that the final products were dried for about 24 hours at 70 degrees C and kept in dark storage. So this is the results and discussion. So the green synthesis of AJ and MP was successfully conducted using the city flower extract and also the NAOH. So the city flower extract act as both reducing and stabilizing agent for AG and 3 from AG plus to AG. So as you can see here in this picture, the naked eye observation can saw the color changes from light blue to dark brown that indicates the formation of AG and P. And you can see here also that the AG and PAC, which is the nanocomposite, is a black powder that contains a very fine shiny silver particles, which is the silver particles. And next, as you can see here in this picture, this is the uh, sample taken for every 5 minutes until 30 minutes that complete the reaction to produce the silver nanoparticles. And next, from the the synthesis of silver nanoparticles, we can get the XRD analysis for the AG and P's. So from this XRD analysis, we can saw four peaks for the formation of silver nanoparticles. So from these four peaks, we can use the Shares equation to get the average crystallite size uh, from the formation of silver nanoparticles, which is 16.11 nanometer. So this is the results and discussion for the different parameter involved in this experiment. The first parameter is the effect of activated carbon ratio. So as you can see here, pure activated carbon without silver nanoparticles can only remove for about 71% of crystal by the time. However, for 0.25 and 0.5 gram ratio of activated carbon are not suitable since it is lower than pure AC to remove this crystal violet dye. However, for 0.75 to 1.25 gram ratio of activated carbon, it has better performance, especially for 1 gram ratio because it has the highest absorption capacity with 95% of the removal of crystal violet dye. So the next parameter is the effect of contact time. So as you can see here in this figure, at 10 to 90 minutes, the absorption was very rapid compared to 120 to 240 minutes. This indicates that the active sites were decreasing within the time. So at 240 minutes, the percentage removal was about 98%, which is completely removed the crystal violet dye. Next parameter is the effect of absorbent dosage. So as you can see here in this figure, as the hypothesis, the more the absorbent dosage, the higher the absorption capacity. So both 30 and 40 mg shows the highest removal compared to other dosage. However, 30 mg was chosen to ensure less waste and cost during the experiment. The next parameter is the effect of pH dye. So as you can see here in this figure, alkaline medium shows higher absorption compared to neutral and also acidic medium. It is because strong electrostatic attraction between Ag and PSC and alkaline CV dye. And both pH 9 and 10 shows the highest absorption with complete removal of this crystal violet dye. 
since pH 9 and pH 10 shows better performance in removing crystal violet dye, so further experiments need to be carried out to know the potential for both of these pH. So as you can see here in this figure, pH 10 medium shows very rapid absorption compared to pH 9 starting at 10 minutes. And at 40 minutes, the AG and PSC had already completely removed crystal violet dye in pH 10 medium. And at 50 to 60 minutes, the absorption was constant throughout the experiment. So for the conclusion, this is the best parameter or the best condition in removing crystal violet dye using the AG and PSC. So the AC ratio is about 1 gram, the contact time is 240 minutes, the dosage is 30 mg and the dye pH is 10. So in conclusion, objective 1 was successfully conducted which is the green synthesis of AGNPs and loading into antimeter carbon and also we know the average crystallite size for AGNPs is around 16.11 nanometer from the SRD analysis. And lastly, objective 2 was also successfully conducted which is to analyze the absorption capacity of the absorbent in, in removing crystal violet dye. So this is the best parameter and the best condition in removing CV dye. So this is the future work. So in future, I propose that the reusability or the regenerating study of the absorbent need to be conducted to know the true potential and the maximum potential of the absorbent in removing this uh, dye. And also the absorbent waste management also need to be conducted so that the absorbent will not be the pollutant after the removal of the water pollutants and lastly to study on the aggregation of silver ions in aqueous solution. So I think that's all from me. Thank you for your time. And this is the references for this presentation. Thank you.